When you're learning the handstand, it's beneficial to isolate sections of your body to give them extra focus. This allows you to really hone in on one section of your body and get a feel for how to hold it inverted. Which is why I recommend the tripod headstand as the second step to the handstand. It allows you to really focus in on the core and lower body. What you're going to learn in this video is how to make a tripod between your head and hands for a wider base of support to remove the upper body requirements when you're inverted. This allows you to really focus on the core and lower body. But first, and as I recommend with all inversion practice, make sure you warm up. This includes doing wrist circles like I'm doing there, forward extension in the wrists, backward extension in the wrists, and make sure you do flexion as well. And that's bare minimum. I have an entire video on warm-ups if you're not aware of how to warm up for handstands. You also want to make sure you have a solid frog stand and I also have a frog stand video in this playlist, so make sure you check that out if you don't have a solid frog stand to begin with. But before we get started, let's talk about safety really quick. Falling flat on your back is never ideal, even if you have blankets and pillows in front of you. So for that reason, I recommend always practicing your headstands in front of a wall. That way if you lose your balance, your feet bump the wall, and then you can kick off the wall back into balance. Eventually you won't need the wall behind you, but we'll talk about that later. Alright, let's talk about how to get into headstands step by step. Start off by choosing the wall you're going to practice in front of, and make sure it's a wall that a lot of people won't see, because there is a chance you might ding and dent it. Then get into a frog stand, and you want to be just the right distance from the wall so your head is just inches in front of the wall. Next. You want to lower down gently so the top of your head is resting on the floor. Not your neck, not your forehead, but the very top of your head. Now this next step is the hardest and we'll talk more about it later, but bring your knees together and raise the hips up so that your hips are stacked above your head and shoulders. Most of the strength to raise your hips will come from the lower back. Now once you have your hips up, extend at the knees to straighten your legs. When you do this, concentrate on pointing the toes up towards the ceiling, alright? It's like you're trying to touch the ceiling with your feet. Also make sure you're contracting the abs, the glutes, and the thighs. Holding those contractions will really help you hold a straight headstand. And to get out of the headstand, simply let your feet just drop to the floor behind you. Now eventually, after you practice the headstand enough in front of a wall, you'll be so good at it and so confident that you can do it out in the middle of the room. But how do you get there? And how do you know when you're ready to move away from the wall? Well, I'm going to give you some tips that are going to help you focus on the individual movements of the headstand, and then you'll be able to know when you're ready. Okay, the first tip I can give you is to get comfortable on your head. So get into a frog stand, drop the top of your head down to the floor, and just rest there. You want to be looking straight ahead between your arms, between your feet, at whatever's behind you. You're going to be spending a lot of time on your head like this when you're practicing headstands, so I recommend spending quite a bit of time just practicing this position. Also, I want to note that if you don't have carpeting like I have here in my basement, you'll want to fold up a towel or a blanket for you to put your head on. The more time you spend in that position, then the easier your headstands will be. The second tip I can give you is to raise your hips for reps. So get in front of the wall, get the top of your head on the floor, and raise those hips up until your feet touch the wall behind you. In the beginning, you might have to really launch your hips up using momentum, and that's perfectly fine. Keep doing it, and eventually your lower back will develop the strength so that you can do this slow and controlled like I'm doing here. Also, when you first start practicing this, you won't be able to slowly bring your feet back down. In fact, your feet will probably just fall to the floor, and that's fine too. With practice, you'll develop the strength. Okay, once you have the hip raising part down, you're pretty much ready to go in and out of full headstand, because the extension of the knees is the easy part. You'll get the hang of that really quickly. Basically, what you want to do here is just start off rocking forward, put the head flat on the floor, top of your head, raise the hips, extend the knees, all in one fluid motion, and then come back down. Make sure when you come back down, you do it as slowly and controlled as possible, coming back to your feet, and then rocking back into another rep. 
Just do this for reps over and over in front of the wall. And once you can do this, I'd say at least 10 times without touching the wall at all, then you're ready to move to the center of the room. All right, everybody, that's how I learned the tripod headstand. And once you get it down, don't be afraid to experiment a little bit. You know, try moving your legs around while you're inverted, and that'll really help you develop core strength and get better at balancing. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like so others can find it. Don't forget to subscribe to Minus the Gym too. I have plenty of good content coming your way. And make sure you tap that little bell icon so you get notified when I post new videos. Talk to you later.